Oh, that delay really knocked all the funny out of me, Rob. Hello. Ten, nine, eight. Oh, we started. Hi. I mean. Hi. Your hello was before my... I was doing a countdown. Sometimes I count down from ten, but then you start. Hi. Hi, Rob. Hello, Kyle. How are you? Pretty pretty okay. Okay, yeah. All things considered. All, all considered. Yeah. We're, we're back in the all saddle again. Considered. We're back on schedule. So, yeah, this is uh, Second Favorites, Episode 2. Uh, your favorite... I'm sure your second favorite biannual podcast. I just wanted to be anyone's favorite anything i will settle for second favorite though yeah because i mean let's be real we're two short guys from the midwest we're not going to be anybody's favorite anything it's it's not going to happen for us well you been good uh you know i've been all right yeah it's good you know all right for me is it's it's about uh comparisons last time we did this it was winter yeah it is now uh, the middle of June. The dog days of summer, I believe it's called. The dog days of summer, yes. Uh, Possibly my second favorite Florence and the Machine song. That's my second favorite animal weather analogy. My first favorite animal weather analogy is raining cats and dogs. So, But uh, last time one. we did it, it was winter, which means that everyone that lives in the Midwest during winter is in the throes of depression. So I think we're all coming out of that frost with a little bit of vitamin D. Yeah, yeah, vitamin got, D. gotta get that vitamin D. You I recently got a lot of vitamin D on <laughs> one of your arms. You went on a little tour. You want to talk about yeah. your tour? Oh uh, yeah, sure. I uh, I went uh, followed one of my 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 favorite band around there, uh, ending their run, the Motion City soundtrack. It's very sad to see them go, but I went to four of their concerts within like a week and a half. What was the farthest drive you made? Oh, uh, I. Drove from Kansas City to St. Louis, and it's about like four hours. That was the farthest mileage. Yeah, and it, uh, that one wasn't so bad. The drive to Omaha, Nebraska was possibly the worst three hours I have spent anywhere in my entire life. Not a lot of scenery. Uh, no, there's nothing. A lot of field? There's trees. No, there's fields and fields, and then a couple of trees. And then more fields. I think they need more fields. I've made that drive before. The worst part of that drive is at night. Yeah, no. At night was worse because you can't even see the few trees that are out there. Nothing like a three-hour drive in pitch black. Also, I'm constantly terrified that I'm going to run into a deer. Oh, yeah. Those fields with just nothing barring it? Yeah. It's, there's just going to be a deer that's going to run out and kill me. But, yes, on my uh, three hour drive and other three hour drive and four hour drive one of my arms got very tan and the other one well it just looks like it belongs to a man who stays inside and plays video games 100 percent of the day so would you say you have a trucker's tan as opposed to a farmer's tan uh yes yeah yeah a trucker's tan i kind of think that that's like a good like a unspoken benefit of being a trucker is that one of your arms becomes very tan. That's a unique thing. Like, some people are into unique things. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. It's a it's an uncommon quality, I suppose. It's cool. Well, I can't say that I've ever done a four-city tour to see a band that I like, let alone love. So, I'm very envious of you for yeah. that. It, uh, it's been fun. However, it has sparked a unquellable thing in me that now I just want to drive places. Because now I'm, I'm planning a trip to California and uh, Portland and Seattle and Vancouver and such. Uh, but now I'm also thinking of going possibly this uh, winter or fall and driving uh, to the East Coast Ooh. and just driving around there to New York and Washington, D.C. and That would be nice. Delaware and uh, maybe up to Ontario. Is Delaware one of those places that uh, you don't know if it exists because, like, no one ever knows anyone from Delaware? Or is that Rhode Island? You know, I think it's kind of both. Is part of the reason why you like driving so much because you get to pee in a bottle? I mean, it's not my favorite thing about it. When bottle becomes full, you throw it out the window? It's probably my second favorite thing about P-bomb. driving long distances. Is your first favorite thing listening to Alanis Morissette's Jagged Little Pill on repeat? That is definitely my favorite thing. Yeah, it's my favorite thing. 
But, I mean, uh, that's my favorite thing, just like in general, though. If you haven't listened to Alanis Morissette's Jagged Little Pill in the last five years, are you alive? Hello? Are you there? So if you listened to our other podcast, if you're one of the five to six people that partook... Uh, I don't think it's actually six people. I think it's two people. Plus us? Yeah. Four people listen. to Four people it. listen to it, and then one of those people I know listens to it. Shout, I'm, I just want to give a shout out to our biggest fan, Brittany. Brittany? She is our biggest fan. She she's, is she's listen- my friend, but you... You oh, she's, she's definitely not, not my she's friend. She's not your friend. No. So, one half of a friend of the show. Yes. Brittany. Great, great job. Thanks. Thanks for encouraging us. Thanks for thanks for the encouragement, Brittany. Yeah. You're a shining star among human beings. But anyway, <laughs> there was a, we had talked about trying to do tall toms to where short guys like us, if you bought a pair of tall toms, they would donate them to another short guy. I have an update. I have a tall tom oh, update. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I can't get a hold of Tom Cruise. Turns out he's not readily available to listen to cockamamie schemes made by people in the Midwest. So that's the update on Tall Toms. That is shocking. Still don't even have a pair of regular Toms either. I didn't know that they made Toms for men for a very long time. There are some pretty sweet digs. I just envision, like, if you buy the dress pair, this might be poor taste, but I just envision that they donate the same pair that you buy. So, like, if you bought a pair of men's dress shoe Toms, there's just, like, a six-year-old somewhere that doesn't have, like, ready access to water or food that is just rocking some sweet dress Toms. I sincerely hope that that's the case because I just I just want these kids in Africa to be just rocking their canvas shoes with nothing else on. I want three things for them. I want them to have access to clean water. I want Absolutely. them to have access to food. Yes. And I want them to be wearing just badass dress shoes <laughs> and, like, a pair of shorts, and that's it. Like, just the dressiest little guy running around the village. Are they, like, shiny leather s- shoes? No, I think they're, they're all f- sort of a fabric material, but, mm. I mean, can you go wrong with shorts, no shirt, and dress shoes? I mean, I, I, if I could, that's what I would wear to work every day. Yeah. Yeah, shorts, no shirt, I mean, and dress you shoes. You know, just perfect. general office attire. Yeah. <laughs> dress Tuxedo shoes. Tuxedo t-shirt, dress shoes, and gym shorts. I mean, <laughs> depends on the office, I guess. So we usually like to talk about the nerdy things that we're into. Yes. yes. Last time uh, we talked about Star Wars. It was very topical at the time. The last time that we planned to record, we were going to talk about Deadpool. So that gives you a little bit of a time frame. So that means that we recorded in January. Yeah. And that we attempted to record again in February. And then we attempted to record again in March. But I have uh, I have commitment podcast issues. commitment issues. I don't like to be put on a schedule because then I feel like I'm not just being me. So I'll try and do better. If if we get up to three listeners, I'll we'll do it on a schedule. So, uh, but so we'll talk about just kind of the state of superhero movies since we're into that nerdy shit. I saw Deadpool. Uh, I want you to go first. I really like Deadpool. Um, maybe not the technically greatest film achievement of the uh superhero genre however i thought it was very funny and i think it i think it did what it was intending to do i thought that deadpool was funny but i will say that i think deadpool is the most important superhero movie even more so than avengers or or at least parallel to avengers you can Mm, call it a tie mm, mm, mm. because what deadpool proved Deadpool proved a, a few things, but one of the things that it proved was that you can have an R-rated movie for superheroes that still has a broad audience and still has global success, which is important for people like us that enjoy this type of thing. And the other thing that it proved is that it could be done without a huge budget, which gives me hope for more variety. Yeah, or really huge stars either, because Ryan Reynolds is very... The only named person. He, that, that he's movie. the only named person in that movie. I, I guess you could kind of consider Marina Baccarin. No, because but like no, people like, right now are Googling Marina Yeah, exactly. Um, and then like TJ Miller is popular right now, but nobody, even then, nobody really knows who he is. You can much. watch Silicon Valley and not know that that's TJ Miller. Yeah, exactly. So... Yeah, I think it's good. Uh, <clears throat> and Ra- 
and honestly, I don't even think Ryan Reynolds is that big of a name currently. I think he's a name to people that are in our age group. Yeah. I don't think he's like Robert Downey Jr. has widespread. Yeah. He's the name. Him, Scarlett Johansson and Robert Downey Jr. are the name people in the other franchises. Yeah. Hugh Jackman. Like yeah, everybody but, knows but who Hugh, Hugh Jackman, Jackman is. wasn't big until those X Men. That's movies, true. So, that is true. Uh, like, yeah. Those X Men movies, the name person was Patrick Stewart. Yeah. So, but uh, Sir Ian McKellen. Speaking big of ups. movies with name people, we haven't talked about Batman. No, we have not talked, we talked about... about the trailer for Batman yes. Superman. So now, this could be a really long one. So I'm just going to give a short one. I'll go first. I think that Ben Affleck was great. I think that every scene that Ben Affleck in was in when he was Bruce Wayne is good. Uh, I didn't care for the movie. I think that they are just panicked trying to establish a universe. And I think that if they would have let that movie be its own movie and not rush it in to try and cram the Justice League in there, that it would have been a much better movie. You said Bruce Wayne, or Ben Affleck as Bruce Wayne. Did you not like Ben Affleck as Batman? I liked him as Batman, but most of the scenes... Almost all of the scenes with Batman and Superman interacting, I thought were bad. If if I could just like when he went to rescue, spoiler alert! If you haven't seen it by now, you don't. Whatever. When it's he went to June. rescue, when he went to rescue Martha, and he just punched, he just beat the shit out of those guys. Yeah, that was awesome. That's some of the best Batman. That was fighting. possibly the best Batman scene we've seen. In a film but, ever. But the important Batman scenes where he had the iron suit, which my favorite comic book Batman costume, I thought that part was kind of weak sauce. I thought, like, him discovering Doomsday's, Doomsday's weakness, which, what a waste of Doomsday, by the way. I, I, I have a big rant about this, that it would take much too long. We could, do, we could fill an hour of me just bitching yeah. about this movie, but, like, I, I liked him better. I will see the Ben Affleck Batman movie. I will not see the Justice League movie. Hmm. I I liked the film. I did not think it was amazing, um, but I liked it fine. Um, I'm not a huge – one of your big problems is them just wasting away Doomsday. I'm not as big a fan of Doomsday, so I'm not broken up about them wasting him. In the comic book, <clears throat> he completely destroys half of the country, just defeats the Justice League – punches Supergirl and turns her into an actual puddle and then kills yeah. Superman. Yeah. And in the movie, they waste it. By the end of the movie, he's already back. Yeah. Do it after just... Make it the first Superman movie after Justice League. Give it some legs, and then we can talk about it. But I just... And, well, and this sad part is now you have a bad taste in your mouth. And a lot of people have a bad taste in their mouth oh, about the whole thing. They're and so, shaking up that whole studio. They fired people and they've changed stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, and, like, the movie wasn't great, but I think it was fine. Um, I liked Batman is awesome. Uh, Batman is possibly my favorite character of all time in any fictional universe. Um and I, I thought Ben Affleck did an excellent job. Um, I a wanted lot of, to like it. I thought Man of Steel was great. Did you like Man of Steel? Yeah. I really like Man of Steel as well. Um, I know that a lot of people didn't, mostly yeah. because of the ending. I think it's weird that I liked... I, I don't like any Superman movie other than that. Hmm. Any yeah. of them. So I'm, I'm not really a huge Superman fan in general. I don't think I've seen any of them other than Superman Returns and the first Superman movie with Christopher Reeve. Oh, that's a, that's a classic movie. I guess. Yeah, I mean, and it, I, I mean, it's it. it's a classic movie, but it's one of those classic movies like Gone with the Wind. Sure, it's a classic movie, but is it good? I don't know. It's generational, I think. Yeah, it's generational, and it's a matter of what it did at the time. So we'll transfer from that transition from that to two of in my opinion the strongest you'll disagree on one of them but i think two of the like we're getting somewhere with all these superhero movies like they're starting to get enough history and they're starting to get enough background that they're solid we'll go we'll go x-men first we'll save okay. civil war for last but x-men apocalypse the the first three x-men movies plus wolverine origins you know they're they're far enough in the past that I don't know how they compare to the recent superhero movies because yeah. the climate changed. But I think Apocalypse 
is better than Days of Future Past, and it's as good as First Class. I think it's my favorite of all the X-Men movies, just because we finally get to see, like, this is it. This is them turned up. This is them fighting. Like, it's on. And we had a cool portrayal of a cool villain. I didn't realize Poe Dameron was also Apocalypse until, like, I had seen several trailers and stuff, so I thought that that was pretty cool. Huh. Uh, I really liked um, Apocalypse. I my up until now my favorite X Men movie was X Two. Um, I fucking love Nightcrawler. He is the Nightcrawler in the White House scene. That's X Two, right? Yeah, that is X Two. That, that is well prior to this. That was one of the actually prior I, to X Men <laughs> Days of Future Past with Quicksilver. The Quicksilver scenes in yeah. Days of Future Past, those, yeah. that Nightcrawler in the White House scene was some of the coolest, like superhero, superhero powers action. Yeah, on yeah. display. Uh, and I, I love his powers. I love the look of him, and I love that display of power. Um, they give him cool moments in this movie. He does get some cool moments. I was a l- not let down. I wasn't disappointed necessarily. I, I just I always want more Nightcrawler. So that's kind of my thing um but i really like this movie i did not really like days of future past all that much i didn't either um the quicksilver scene is obviously fantastic uh but then past that it's just it was trying to do too many things and none of them were particularly interesting well so if you look at a movie like apocalypse and i'm gonna go back to batman v superman because neither of us touched on the one good part of that movie, and that was Wonder Woman. Oh, Wonder Woman so, was fucking awesome. on Apocalypse, they introduce a lot of people that you have no reference to. Sure. And they spend less than five minutes introducing you to them. And I feel like the portrayals of some of those characters were cooler and more meaningful than... Like, they had a hard time cramming three characters into Batman v Superman in a two-and-a-half-hour movie. Yeah. And they... They did it in this movie. They establish a villain. They establish the villain's history. They He assembles his team, and, like, they give you just enough. Even the X-Men, they give you just enough to know that, like, this is who you're rooting for, this is who you're rooting against, this is what they're up against. I thought it was... I think it's good. I think it's one of the better superhero movies overall, and it's probably the best X-Men movie. Uh, I think I would agree with that, yeah. Um, I do find it interesting that like from what I'm seeing online, nobody really likes this movie. Yeah, people and I hate don't it. know why. I don't know either. Like I, I, I think haven't it's because it came out one month after Civil War. Maybe. Yeah, I haven't gone in depth with it to like look at the actual reasons that people are not liking it. But like I've just you know I've heard that people aren't liking it, and I honestly can't figure out why. Like I don't. Well, like, I don't see the reasons uh, why people wouldn't like it. It's just I, I don't know. None of it makes sense. There's a cool Wolverine cameo. I mean, it's just, it's it's all around. I fucking love the Quicksilver scene in this movie, too. He's great. He's so good. He's great. He's so I mean, good. you couldn't do, they, I w- they do just the right amount of him in every movie, because you can only do it so many times. Yeah. But when he fights Apocalypse, it is awesome. Yeah. They and give it, him, they make him in, he has two scenes in the movie where he displays his power. They make you, they establish him as somebody that is powerful they make him the comic relief. They make him somebody that you care about. Like, they give... That guy had, like, ten minutes of screen time, and it's ten minutes of the most captivating parts of that movie. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, similar to a another film, Civil War. Civil War. With Spidey Man. Civil War, you Spider-Man. go first. I think it's pronounced Spitterman. Spitterman? Oh, no. You know what? It's like the, the a bug, spider. Sp- ah, I get it. What? Man. Spider Man. Ah, uh, because he like shoots web and like crawls around and stuff. I he can stick to the wall. I think. Yeah, I guess that does make sense. He is a kind of a, a spiderish, like man, boy, thing. Uh, Civil War is just fantastic, and it's. I mean, like it's been a bit since the movie has come out. The airport scene with Spider Man and Giant Man. Just, like, I was, my stomach and chest were just going insane with how excited I was to be seeing these things on screen done this well and just, 
every second is either a funny moment or a awesome action move or something and it is just just amazing i feel like civil war and apocalypse they both accomplished sort of a similar thing in this is what was in our imaginations when we were kids and absolutely we were with toys or when we were kids and we were watching the x-men cartoon like or reading comics the we, avengers yeah. movie the, the first avengers movie they were fighting an endless horde of aliens and it was fine but we yeah. haven't got to see people just wail on each other like this. And yeah. it was done so well. I've saw And I like characters that War. we care about too. Right. And they're portraying them awesome. Black Panther is probably I mean you know, Black Panther is cool. Is he the coolest? I don't know. Is he your favorite? Is he my favorite? I don't know. But I could not imagine a better it goes back to the damn Batman versus Superman thing. How much did you care about Black Panther with so little screen time? Yeah, like how intriguing was he? He's quite intriguing. I like I don't I don't know anything about Black Black Panther. Frankly, I could give a shit less about. Right. Black Nobody Panther. had to know anything about him. You knew how much of a badass he was the first time you saw yeah, him. Absolutely. It, they just they knocked it out of the park. Civil War. When it comes out, and I can watch it at home. I've watched it twice. I imagine that when I have the ability to watch it at home, I'll watch the airport scene over and over again. And I bet you I noticed something different for four or five times. I want Absolutely. To, I want to watch Winter Soldier, and then I want to immediately watch Civil War so that I can finally decide. Like, neither one of them are my overall favorite Marvel yeah. movie, but Civil or Winter Soldier right now is my number two. So I think Civil War is close, and I, I want to watch them back to back. Uh, Winter Soldier is my personal favorite. Uh, while this one is more exciting on a... It's got more of the humor and it's got more of the just blatant awesome action scenes. I don't think the I think the plot is better in Winter Soldier than it is in this one. Um I just prefer that as a film more. I like Winter Soldier better because Iron Man's not in it. Really? I'm Iron Maned out. Really? Oh yeah. I give me Black Widow all day long. Give me Captain America all day long. Please Please give me as much Bucky and Falcon on the same time, on the screen at the same time. Oh, absolutely. I fucking love them together, man. They're just awesome. no Iron Man. Really? You're that I'm Iron Man out. I'm done with Iron Man. I was Iron Man out after, I might have been Iron Man out before Age of Ultron. Hmm. I, I really like, I liked Age of Ultron, I think, more than most but I, it's got one of my favorite characters of all time in it, Vision. Yeah, absolutely. That was fantastic. That was the um, best part of the movie. I I did find it very strange because they brought Iron Man to a perfect end with Iron Man 3 with him just destroying all of his suits and everything. Right, and then, and then he's just like, they cut to Age of Ultron and he's back at it again. I'm like, didn't you right say there. you were done with this shit, man? Damn, Tony Stark, back at it again with the new suits. Just all of the new suits, man. Yeah. So many fucking new suits. I don't know. Like... Ramping it up to 11, creating an ultra super bean that's just going to destroy everything. The state of these movies, though, like, I like where they're headed. I read something the other day that says that Doctor Strange uh, might be more like a horror movie, mm. which is fantastic. That could be Looking real cool. Looking forward to that. I, but, so, I read, I read an article, and it said that there is a general consensus that these movies are going to go the way of the Western. Absolutely, yes. And I hope so, because if you go to any thrift store, whatever, you can find, like, 75 <laughs> Westerns. And I yeah. hope I hope that when I'm 80 years old or, you know, I can just years sit old, on my couch and watch nothing on, but there, Westerns. There's, there are TV stations that are Western channels. Hell yeah. If, if at some point in my life I get to sit down and watch superhero movies – all day long and yes. have as much variety and have as much depth as those westerns have then bring it on please please mass produce that. absolutely i remember going over to my grandpa's house and he'd just be watching turner classic movies when he, and just westerns all the fucking time i'm like what he probably had 50 vhs tapes i know of westerns probably just please please make that happen Ab absolutely yes you just go and get by the 80 disc collection yeah. there's <laughs> of superhero I mean, movies john wayne by himself made like 
20 or 30. Just so damn many. And the, the Clint Eastwood ones. So, yeah. like, if that's what we get, then bring it on, man. Bring it on. That's what I want. I can, as much Iron man out as you might be, you know you'll watch that whole thing. <laughs> oh, I'd watch Iron Man 4. I mean, I'm going to go see, I'll go see all these. I'm not going to see Justice League until Disney lets me down or until they make a really bad X-Men movie. Like, I'll keep going to those. I'll go see yeah. that Spider-Man movie. I'm going to go see yeah, Doctor absolutely. Strange. I'm very Just, excited about the Spider-Man movie. It's hard to not be excited about any of them. Yeah. yeah. Except, honestly, for me, and I think a lot of people would agree, Now, not, now not that, excited about Justice League. Yeah, after this, yeah, I'm, I can understand why people are upset about it. And I'm personally, afraid, Personally, I'm still excited. I'm afraid Wonder Woman's going to suffer because of that, and I think that that yeah. might be a good movie, and I think that if Wonder Woman suffers, that's going to be a disservice for female characters. Sure. We got Suicide Squad coming up, though. I don't well, know what your feelings on that I'm going to see that. The trailer for it, they make it look like it's a fun movie like Guardians of the Galaxy was. Sure. So that yeah. was the selling point kind of, for uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. They made. They I actually made feel one. like it has a lot of similarities with Have you ever Guardians. seen the first trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy? The very first one. The one I, that doesn't have the, the 70s music. Yeah, yeah. So the very first trailer for Guardians of the Galaxy, it looked like a sci-fi movie. I think I showed it to you. I believe so. And it's got like just generic background music. Mm-hmm. And the trailer went over bad. They yeah. already had all the the awesome mix soundtrack plan for the movie. So they made a trailer, they recut it. And I, I think it's the same trailer, the exact same trailer with like two scenes changed order. And I think it's got the seventies music. on Yeah. It. And everybody went crazy about it. Yeah. And I think that's what suicide squad can be. Like they made the suicide suicide squad trailer with the queen song on it. Yeah. And it looks awesome. So yeah. I, I will see that. Absolutely. I, I think it does look really good. And, and Batman's in that. And I think he, he's going to be great. I think they put Batman in that for a reason. Well, yeah, it's because nobody wants to see this shit without Batman. Right. So <laughs> no, nobody's gonna go see a movie about Deadshot and Katana. Nope. So we like to. Our show is called Second Favorites. It's a humorous little thing that I like to do because I think it makes for good conversations. If you ask someone what their second favorite thing is, I explained it last time. It causes you to think. So we want to try and talk about what our second favorite of something is each show, and we have found a website called Random things random lists and rob is going to refresh it and we are going to say what our second favorite of everything <laughs> that uh, yes it. all right okay first up rob what yeah. is or where was it located your favorite your excuse me your second favorite couch my second favorite couch okay so oh shit man my second favorite couch second favorite couch oh man don't overthink it. I actually think my current couch is my second favorite couch. Okay. Because we had a couch uh, when I was, uh, I don't know, like 12 to 18, the house that I lived in. Um, we had a couch, and it was this gigantic, super fluffy thing. It was awesome. Very comfortable. I think it was brand new when we got it. It was fantastic. Uh, this current couch reminds me a lot of that couch. It's not the same material, and it doesn't really look similar, but it f- has the same kind of feel. It's very poofy. Poofy, yes, it's poofy. I'm poofy looking at it right now. And kind of soft-ish. It is soft-ish. I have sat on it. I can confirm Rob's assessment. Yes. Yes, I think my current couch is my second favorite couch. Okay. My, what is your second favorite my couch? My second favorite couch is similar. See, it's a childhood thing. It's a nostalgia mm, yeah. thing. So my parents bought the biggest sectional that I've ever seen in my life. At some point in time, I was in middle school or whatever. Possibly larger than the house itself. Uh, I don't know what they brought it up there in. I think they used one of those big helicopters that they move cranes with. Just take but, the, uh, take we the had, uh, roof off the house. Yeah, and it had drop a it in. recliner on either end. I remember that. Hell yeah. And like, it just... I slept on that thing. Oh, man. I didn't want to go to bed. That was like the... the, But I can't say that it's my favorite couch ever because my current couch, where I watch Netflix for like six or seven hours and think about all the bad decisions that I've ever made in my life, that's my favorite couch. So, okay. Isn't that what you do on all couches? Oh, my gosh, dude. All right. Next up on the list is second favorite nail file. I don't really want to out you here, buddy, but I don't know how much nail file experience you have. I have... Maybe one experience with a nail file yeah. in my entire... I had an older sister, so I've, like, seen them, I yeah. guess. Yeah, I mean, I guess my second favorite nail file is just 
<laughs> any right i don't i mean i don't have a favorite nail. i don't use a nail file my second favorite nail file is every single other nail file on the planet other than the one that my sister had because that one is my favorite because it's the only one i've ever used perfect i i i have no opinion on this item all right <laughs> drill press <laughs> Rob, do, do you know what a drill press is, first of all? I 100% have no fucking okay, so clue a what a drill press, press is. a power is. tool that is mounted on a table, and it's fixed, and it's a downward motion drill that you use to, like, drill out holes. Okay, and, uh, very items. useful. So uh, I've only ever used one drill press, so I have no second favorite drill press. Rob has no <laughs> drill press experience. Excellent. So he has no second favorite drill press. Next item. The next one is going to be tough because it's second favorite TV. Oh, my goodness. And, like... I mean, TVs are cool. I love TVs, but they're kind of all the same, aren't they? Yeah, I hate. I mean, they're not all the same, but they're not different enough. I don't to know have a that I've favorite. ever had a TV that I just thought, man, I miss that TV. This is not turning out great. This next one's going to be good. <laughs> Second favorite blanket. My f- first favorite blanket. You know, I'm not a blanket person. I don't have like bedding that I've had for years. I don't have a blankie. Sure. I don't. I don't. <laughs> You don't have a blankie? I don't have a blankie. You're 32 years old. Why don't you have a blankie? That's a normal old. thing, isn't it? I don't think I've ever had a blankie. Mm. So, dead. So dead for me. Do you not did have... you ever have a blankie? Uh, I did have a blankie. I mean, I have a blanket on my couch well, right now that I bought at Ikea, and the Ikea has all the cool Swedish names for everything, yeah. and the name of this blanket was Girly, which is very appropriate Hell if you're yeah. buying a throw blanket. <laughs> blah, 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 blanket. Uh, I have a blanket that I've had since I, before I was born, actually. Perfect. Um, although it's not really my favorite blanket or my second favorite blanket. It's just kind of a thing that I have because I keep it because of reasons, I guess. I don't know. Nailed it. My favorite blanket are the, uh, Velux brand. (laughs) They're not, it's not a brand, I don't think, but it's like, you know, the hotel blankets that are like ridiculously soft. Yeah. That's my favorite blanket. My my favorite blanket is one that you can make a blanket fort out of. Excellent. Yeah. Yes. I guess my Oh no. This is just turning into our favorites though. Yeah, this is a dud. Okay. This sucks. This, this list kind of sucks, but the next one is broccoli. <laughs> uh, is there more than one kind of broccoli? I don't know. Actually, I, there are. I listened to a podcast recently about Son broccoli. Son of a bitch. Um It's very it was actually a very interesting podcast. Uh However, broccoli is all the same, and it's all just mediocre at best. Then I eat it because I'm I know I'm supposed to. I love broccoli. You're a terrible human being. I well, I realize that, but that's for way other reasons than not liking broccoli that much. All right, Kyle. So <laughs> this I, is a surprise. We have a little list that we go by, and it's a loose list. It says Rob's activity. I don't know what it is. So you're about to spring this on me. So my activity that I just want, I just want to give you some buzzfeed quizzes yes yes now i love it i love (laughs) i have not done much research for this one i love buzzfeed quizzes however (laughs) just a cursory search of some of the best buzzfeed quizzes perfect we're going to start out with the very important topic okay Really getting real deep into it. Let's get it. With which full house character are you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is very topical Do with uh, Fuller House Fuller coming house. out. Loved it. So we're going to have to pick your favorite 90s album. Okay. On here we have Spice Girls. I'm not sure which Spice Girls album it is because it doesn't say on here. Let me see. But among the choices. I think. Okay. So Sp- Spice Girls. There's a Spice Girls album. Hanson. There's a Hanson album uh, called Middle That's, of it's Nowhere. It's the Hanson album. That's one that has Umbop. Mm. Umbop. Uh, Ace of Bass, The Sign. <laughs> yes. Alanis Morissette. Is that Jagged Little Pill? Yes. 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 Uh, <laughs> Eric Clapton. Uh, Unplugged. Unplugged. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Mariah Carey's Daydream. Daydream. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe this is just the soundtrack to The Bodyguard. <laughs> yes, yes. And that next one is Savage Garden. I saw it. Yes. And then uh, Third Eye Blind, Third Eye Blind oh, is the other one. All right, so let me see it. what of those is it. your favorite 90s oh, album? Oh, man. This is so tough between Alanis. Pick Third Eye Blind. I was just Third Eye Blind. about Third Eye Blind. The Third Eye Blind is excellent. I do love Third Eye Blind. They can't be that expensive to like book for a birthday party, you think? 
I believe we could get it. For... I want to get them for my birthday. So party. our birthday party is pretty close, or our birthdays are pretty close together. I feel like if we pooled our money, we could just do one birthday party and get Third Eye Blind to play. We could crowdfund that easily. That would be awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna look into that Kickstarter. <laughs> get Third Eye Blind for my birthday party. Do do do. Do, 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 do. We're gonna get a copyright strike. Please, please copyright me, Third Eye Blind. Just please let me know that you know I exist. What is your ideal Friday night plan? Oh my god! Clubbing. No. Dinner and a movie. Mm. Netflix. Ooh. I know that's a personal Ooh. favorite of yours. Watching reruns on Nick at Night. <laughs> Grabbing pizza with my friends. Ooh. Well, I would assume that means your friends. I don't have any. Yeah. Uh, a glass of wine and a good book. Dang. Uh, hanging with my. S-O, I believe that means significant, significant other. other. Mm. Chilling listening to music or I never make plans. Oh, man. It's either Netflix or I never make plans. Netflix. Can I make a prediction before sure. we get Absolutely. there? Absolutely. Please okay. do. I, I want to be Uncle Joey, <laughs> not Uncle Jesse. I want to be Uncle Joey. But I don't think I'm zany enough on the questions yet. Mm. That's possibly true. I might be. If I'm Uncle Jesse, though. All right. Let's go. Let's keep okay. Going. God, I uh, love this. Pick a toy. We have the original Game Boy. I don't know if it necessarily has to be the original Game Boy, but that's what it shows, so okay. I'm going to assume that's what it is. Beanie Babies, Furby, Tamagotchi, a Barbie, some sort of Barbie variant that I remember seeing commercials for as a kid. It's one of those weird things that kind of fly up when you pull the cord on them or push the button, and it's got these weird-ass fairy wing things, and it's supposed to be like a weird helicopter thing. I don't know what it is. Uh, Polly Pocket, a talk boy, moon shoes. Game Boy me, bro. Game Boy? Game Absolutely boy Game Boy. So, fun fact, I never owned a Game Boy. Oh, man, I'm very I sorry. never had a Game Boy until my little sister wanted one. It's not that I didn't want one, it's just that I didn't get one. So... I first got the original Game Boy. The original Game Boy came out in what? 80 something, I think. No, in... I think it was more like 91. Okay. Or 92. Very early 90s. Yeah. Uh I believe I got my Game Boy 2001. 2001 is actually yeah. correct. Yes. All right. Pick a 90s TV sidekick. Oh man. See, this is showing some of my ignorance cuz I don't know who some of these are. Let me but if, off if of the list know, that I can tell, tell are Sean Hunter from Boy Meets World. Sean Hunter from Boy Meets World. Uh, so the girl is Blossom's friend. Uh, that's George Costanza <laughs> from Seinfeld. This is Ferguson. From yes, Clarissa. See, explains it all. Ferguson. This I is Cody from Step by Step, the Code Man. I never watched Step by Step. I think this guy's from Degrassi. I never saw Degrassi. Never that watched is Degrassi. Definitely Carlton. Absolutely from. Uh, who is from she? Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Oh, that's Jackie from Roseanne. And then the never watched the Roseanne one either. In the middle on the bottom. That's is from the the witch Sabrina, Sabrina the, the Teenage, Teenage witch. witch. That's one of the ants, but I can't remember which one because I haven't watched Sabrina oh, the Teenage man. Witch in. Have 15 I ever years? told you how much I love Roseanne? No, I don't well, think we've we talked can about save this. that. I almost want to pick Jackie as my sidekick just because I love Roseanne. First off, I have a problem with Ferguson being on here because he is not a sidekick. No, he her, is the more sidekick of... was the guy that came in through her window. Exactly. He's an antagonist. What the fuck is he doing on this I list? I don't know. That's I kind have of a problem with this. Bummer town. And Cody lived in a van outside of his <laughs> aunt and uncle's house. That's... Pick pick Cody. Cody the Code Man. So that's this one. Yeah. Yeah. Cody. Yeah. Okay, Cody <laughs> Cody from Step by Step. <laughs> Is Kyle's 90s TV sidekick. Because <laughs> he lives in a van. He lives in a van outside of his Just aunt like Uncle's Kyle house. wants to. Dude, I would. If I could have a van. Which class did you like best in high school? Economics, English, social studies, physical education, government, biology, algebra, art, or history? History. History? History. I'm a big fan of history, too. I like to learn about other people doing cool things because I might never do them myself. <laughs> also, you can be really vicarious if you study history. Mm. You can just be on the couch eating 20 chicken nuggets, but you can be like Lewis and Clark in it, you know? To recap, Third Eye Blind, Netflix, Game Boy, <laughs> Cody Maybe. from Step by Step, he lives in a van. and History. History. Okay, now pick a cereal. The options are Captain Crunch, Fruity Pebbles, Tricks, Cheerios, Honey Nut Cheerios, Ooh. Frosted Mini Wheats, Lucky Charms, Raisin Bran, 
or frosted flakes. Now, there is a um, quick... I want to clarify something. This is Captain Crunch without crunch berries. Yeah. So No cinnamon toast crunch as nope, an option? No well, cinnamon damn, toast crunch. that's what I would have picked. Got no, no CT crunch. <sighs> that's what I would have picked. Okay. Well, I guess... Ugh. Who the fuck is going to choose regular Cheerios over Honey Nut Cheerios? And, like, if they're going to have tricks, I think I can have checks. Not checks. What was the... Kicks. Kicks are for... Kicks, kicks were kids. so gross, man. They <laughs> yeah, wanted you to buy kicks, and then you bought kicks, and they needed, like... You, you better buy a bag of sugar when you're buying kicks, because they taste like cardboard crap. My sister, when I... I looked oh, I, at my, my sister. I think my grandma my used to buy them. My sister ate the shit out of kicks, I'm and picking, I don't know why. I'm picking Lucky Charms just for... Because it has a leprechaun on it, and I like leprechauns. <laughs> That's a good reason. Yeah. Well, and they don't have cinnamon toast crunch or kicks. Yeah. Mm. Not mm. checks. Checks. I, I realize checks this isn't my for... my quiz. Personally, I'm a frosted flakes man. They're not bad. They're not bad. I don't. Like as a kid, I just remember wanting corn pops, which are not all, also not on that list. Corn pops were terrible. I wanted corn pops. God. I wanted kicks. And I wanted corn pops were crunch. just the worst. I would thing. eat corn pops just plain, like no milk. I'd just eat handfuls oh, of God, them. Oh, yeah. God, man, no. I'm it's more all of a... straight sugar, man. They wonder why people our age have diabetes and <laughs> obesity. Oh, oh, They're yeah. feeding us freaking straight. Every kid in your, every kid that you knew when you were a kid. Just, just straight did sugar. Did every for kid breakfast. in your school eat cereal for breakfast, Rob? Because every kid in my school did. Absolutely. Every <laughs> single one of them. So, okay, next question is which Baskin Robbins flavor oh my do God. you like best? If just, I don't even want to. Well, it, tell me if there's a funny one, but if not, I want cookies and cream. And if cookies and cream isn't on there, I'm breaking your phone. Oh, no. Cookies and cream is on here. Okay. I was very scared for a second. Yeah. It wasn't. Uh,. No funny ones? There aren't really any funny ones. Very berry strawberry is just kind of fun to say. Yeah, very berry strawberry. Baskin Robbins. Oreo up? cookies and cream. At Baskin Robbins Twitter. Please sponsor us. We need money so badly. <laughs> Which emoji do you use the least? Oh, my goodness. How was that a we, 90s thing? I couldn't tell you. These emojis are great. We have tongue. a tongue emoji, smiley tongue emoji. Yeah, smiley it tongue It doesn't emoji. have a face. It's just a smile with a tongue. That's a little scary. Uh, we have an alien head. Okay. We have a skull. Used skull. We have what appears to be a folded and pressed <laughs> shirt with a tie Extra attached. Extra starch. A diamond. The mad face with... Uh, smoke blowing out of the smoke. nose that doesn't exist. Dancing girls. The two dancing girls in black leotards. Bloody syringe. What does that mean? A bloody syringe? Could I don't know. And then a top hat. Rob, you like top, top hats? I do like top hats okay, a lot. So it's the one that I use the least. Yeah, shirt and tie. Shirt and tie. I, I, I don't cannot think, think of a single one. use for that one. I don't think I've ever. I used. was recently going through emojis with my sister, and we just can't figure out what the use oh. for half of these are it's awesome like if you go to your most you know frequently used emojis it's great man oh yes one of them i don't know when i ever used it which makes me think that i accidentally sent it one time which is just perfect so that was the end and your result is steve hale dj's boyfriend steve <laughs> oh god <laughs> This quiz sucks. You're charming and a bit of a goofball, which is why everyone loves to be around you. And that's not far off, actually. <laughs> that's actually pretty accurate. Damn. You're charming and a goof bit of a goofball. Well, I guess I do like this quiz. <laughs> well, damn, I guess you are Steve Hale. Good idea, Rob. Good idea. <laughs> Good idea on the Steve Hale quiz. Well... We have lots of extra topics, and if we ever do another... <laughs> well, in December, we'll get back together, on, I'm sure. Yeah, we're on schedule. What month is this? Uh, June. The sixth month? So, yeah, December. So, June. We'll have a lot to talk about. Yeah. I'm sure we'll just come up. We're going to do this BuzzFeed quiz thing again, right? Oh, definitely. Because okay. I want to know what type of cookie you are yes. or which 90s pop idol you are. Perfect. What? I'm happy with being Steve Hale. Steve Hale. We should God bless him. We should make a, a note that I was Steve Hale. Writing that down for the records. Kyle is Steve Hale. Steve Hale. DJ's boyfriend. DJ Tanner's boyfriend. Which, I don't know if you saw Fuller House or not, but DJ's keeping it tight in the that old age. That is true. Well, I mean, she's not that much older than me. But Although, if DJ's keeping it nice. See, I'm not... I haven't watched Full House in a very long time. Were they together for a long time? Her and Steve Hale? Yeah. Yeah, I mean... It, Were they together, of. like, at the end of the show? How about Stephanie Tanner in that new show, though? Because I'm pretty sure... Lord. 
uh, DJ's husband is the one who dies in Fuller House. Yeah, but it's not Steve Hill. Steve oh, it's Hill. not Steve Steve's, Hill. Steve's the guy that comes back to train. Have you watched Fuller House? Fuller House? No, absolutely not. What? That's it, your homework. It looked like sh- by just December street trash. By December, you have to have watched Fuller House. Absolutely not. Seriously, we won't wait six months next time. Yeah, we probably should. Uh, we're not going to commit to a schedule because Kyle has problems with that. Hate schedules. That's the end of this episode. Goodbye. Follow us on Twitter at Second Favorites. We Subscribe YouTube, to our YouTube page. YouTube channel. That one is just Second Favorites, two words. 21 views. Excellent. Those are all us. They definitely were all us. And Brittany. Big ups to our biggest fan, Big Brittany. Big ups to Brittany. Uh, so, yeah. Um, we're going to go now. Bye. Bye. Miss you already.